All right. All right. All right. All right. Settle down. Settle down. Settle down. It's the first inning right now. You can use all your energy. Sorry. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the Contaminated Dungeon. It's the E-Town Get Down Weekly Recap. Uh, Sorry that this is getting out a little late this week. It's the holidays. uh, New Year's was on... Is today New Year's? Or is yesterday New Year's? Um, I guess technically it would be yesterday. No, today's the 4th. Today's the second. Today's not the fourth. Today's the second the of January. We were going to do this yesterday, but two people I know were not uh, capable. Who's that? Just these two guys that I know Who that also know? happened to you do You should have called show. us to fill in for them. Yeah. We, oh, yeah, maybe. That would have been a good idea. I mean, I could go through the text and just read the... Uh, I, I debated posting them on Twitter, but I was like, for Nick's sake? <laughs> <laughs> I think we all, like, at one point or another contemplated... S- what were you like more depressed about yesterday, just being alive, or like after you got knocked out of the E Town Get Down playoffs? Wow. Similar feelings. Uh, wow. Um, playoffs, hands down. I don't know. Hands down for me. <laughs> playoffs felt like soulless. Like I didn't have a soul left after I got knocked down of E Town. But, but I still wanted to live. Like I wanted to do it again. Yesterday next hurt. Year. Yesterday hurt a lot. Yesterday I didn't want to live. Nah. I didn't. I was done. I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't function. I couldn't eat. He was shitting. Uh, You weren't sure if you were going to go there So yeah, so we weren't in good shape yesterday pretty much And New Year's Eve tends to do that And I'm honestly, I think this is the last time I'm going out on New Year's Eve Again in my whole life, ever Yeah, so where I'm I went to like a nice little quiet house party It was good, nice time I ate some food and I relaxed Next year I'm planning on doing like a dinner thing Maybe going out to dinner And home by like 9.30 Why don't next year we just record the whole night and just drink here by ourselves yeah I, mean, I did the dinner thing this this year for the first time in in new york in like the upper east side nice italian restaurant problem is i, I got blacked out before dinner started well, and i don't remember what happened after and i know like steve and his girlfriend got in a fight and i'm in the middle of it and then i almost fight steve i almost threw him down a subway like the whole subway stairs at one point and I remember we're on the up, dude, it was out of control. We're on the Upper East <laughs> yeah. Side. For those of you guys that don't yeah. understand, Upper East Side's like here. My friend's apartment's here. I don't know what happened, but I remember me and Steve fighting here at dinner. Next thing I know, we're in an Uber and we get dropped off on like Third Street down here. There's nothing over there that we're looking for. We get out and we're like, we need to go back that way. And I don't know what happened, but that I was so just, you guys were just hammered driving around in Ubers? Just like, yeah, just like blacked out all over the other. city. Yeah, pretty pretty much. I mean, and uh, Standard night in the city. And next thing I know, I wake up and there's no fucking way we're recording. So that's that's what, yeah, happened. That's, that's what happened in my that life. That sounds about right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I was ready to go. I said by five, six, seven, eight ish uh, my direct response to that was no yeah no i'll talk to you later <laughs> no. okay yeah as soon as we said we were gonna do okay, it tomorrow like, shut up listen i i mean i had a nice night i went i was in brooklyn and we were both in new york that's that's funny nice apartment beautiful view of the city when it's condensed like that you know just all you do is just drink so i killed two massive bottles of white wine took some whiskey shots haven't drank whiskey in probably two mm-hmm. years i was drinking jaeger bombs uh that yeah, a boy it was that just, a boy i happened. had like i must have had like 50 dicks in a blanket <laughs> um, oh those are the little hot dogs pig in a you call them dicks in a blanket yeah little, little dicks in a blanket it's cute yeah other than that i don't i re- the last thing i really remember is is like screaming at the tv how much i love ryan seacrest <laughs> i saw you tweet that and i was wondering why you did that i fucking love ryan really? seacrest i'm a huge fan are yeah. you kidding me i didn't know that that guy's all world he's <sighs> a, he's a hard worker he's an entrepreneur he's he's, he's everywhere what, else, what does he do now everything I, uh he's with the what's well, like his main thing the it's kelly ripper now too. Kelly, no kelly ripper live with ryan and kelly that used to be stray hands all gig yeah and then i think the sex between stray hand and kelly stopped and <laughs> michael left someone had to go Someone I never that. heard that. Giants need a pass rush on Michael. You look in good shape. Anyway, yeah. So that was that was my New Year's Eve. I'm glad we didn't do it yesterday. Would have been bad. Yeah, um, so now we're ready. I'm still kind of hurting, to be honest with you. My uh, jaw hurts. I think Steve might have connected with me on a punch. I don't know why it hurts today. So, Steve, we're going to have to talk about this if you listen to this. I would love to talk to Steve about this. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I would like to find out, find out some details. I actually, I actually actually happened. can bring up some funny text, to be honest with you, because he didn't remember anything, and he texted me the next morning. He's like, other than being a huge dick and ruining your night, I'm truly, truly sorry. <laughs> and I love you, and you deserve to beat the shit out of me. 
and I don't even know what he's talking about. I was like, dude, it's fine. I don't even know what happened. <laughs> but apparently we're, he did we're something. Straight, bro. Whoa, cool. but you could beat the shit out of him. Why wouldn't you take advantage of that? Yeah. I mean, we, you want to do it on the next episode? I would we'll bring that. him here and beat the shit out of him all together. That. You guys keep forgetting about the mile. I have to run somewhere as well. Bring Steve. I, mean, I haven't forgot about that him. or I, the I bet that you guys made it. about the Giants and the three wins. And you never, if you, you're yes. so, uh, you know what? Yeah, we just need to make a segment called <laughs> Bets by Snacks. Yeah. Lost, L's, be, L's, L's by snacks. snacks. Yeah. Beats well, by Dre. L's by snacks. I, I the bet was if they didn't win more than two and a half games, I would tweet at Adam Thielen. What did you have to tweet? I don't remember. You don't remember? So I don't have to do it. Uh, there's video footage of you saying it. Yeah, I remember. I, we could roll, t- I remember. I, I, yeah, I know you remember him. too. You just want him to say it. I want. He does just want me to say. Yeah. It. So say it. I want to suck your dick. How do you think Adam's gonna take it? I actually, can't. if so, he blocks me, I'm done. So you've t- <laughs> so you tweeted at him a lot and his wife and stuff, yeah. and they've never responded. What never if this? Won. What never if favorite this? Nothing. What if this is the, not even a favorite? Not really? Even a like, dude. Do and you, who tweets nothing? his wife? I read. Th- there's no replies under her tweets except mine. It's ridiculous. You know maybe they're maybe they're not as good people as you think. Well, yeah, that's not true. Oh. They're from we'll Minnesota. Well, we'll find out. They're when, all good people. You know, after you send that tweet, we'll see if there's a reaction. I hope that's the first one that they respond to. We'll see how understanding and nice of people they oh, are. I'm writing it out now. Oh, good. Beast. I want to suck your cock. No, you're going to do the period first and then tag him and then do it. Because you got to put the period before the name on Twitter so everyone can see it. Fuck. And then you should also hashtag big facts only. Yeah. Do I have to write out big facts only? Hashtag, yeah. Yeah, yeah please. <sighs> He's gonna go to your page and see the Adam Thielen banner. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, well, not, you're not allowed to change that. It's sent. Oh, you just did it. Hell yeah. I'm a man of my word. I'm gonna like it and retweet it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Actually, I don't really know if I want to retweet that. I want to. Say- <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want that. I the- see the first thing on my timeline. <laughs> oh yeah, it's right there. I want to suck your so cock. I'm gonna screenshot that just in case. He's never coming on the pod now. Incredible. No, Incredible. Not. Not anymore, but that's okay. Maybe we get his wife. You want to suck my husband's cock? (laughs) She wants to talk about it. I would have her on. I don't really want to hear her talk about that, to be honest. I don't want to hear anything about anything. Can we please change the subject? I was going to say, I feel like dying again right now. So let's like start talking about things. I feel like I'm going to shit blood again. You guys want to talk about coaching moves? You want to talk about playoffs? You want to do a pick them? Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's go with the coaches. All right, coaches. The hot, what are the coaches? Right because now. there are a lot of people out of jobs after this previous week, and rightfully so, because there was a lot of horrible coaching in 2019 or 2018. Brutal. Brutal. And for our teams, well, not Nick's team, right? Do you guys didn't get rid of anyone on the no. staff, right? Our staff is intact. That is correct. So I'm a Falcons fan. You guys pretty much cleaned house. Yeah, Animal is a a Broncos fan. Yeah, We we got rid of Steve Sarkeesian, our offense coordinator. We got rid of our defense coordinator. We kept Dan Quinn, though. That was like the only thing we really kept as a head coach. Terrible. I mean, I don't hate it. I don't hate the moves either. And a a lot of people are like, you know what's fucked up about football Twitter is like super annoying. Everyone just is in the same group think. As soon as one of the big names in the industry like says something, everyone just hops on board and is like, oh, yeah, that's what I thought, too, whatever, whatever. A couple months ago, Steve Sarkeesian was the worst fucking offensive coordinator ever. Now people are like, oh, they shouldn't have fired him. He looked good at times. I'm like, dude, he was fucking horrible Bad. in the red zone last year. He was horrible in the red zone this year. I think we needed to change something up. There's clearly something not clicking there, no. and it's probably more so on the defensive side of the ball than offense, yeah. considering Matt Ryan had a big bounce back here. I didn't even realize his numbers were this good. I think he had like a 35 to 7 touchdown interception ratio. Yeah, you which guys is had great, which some, is great year. Some yeah. big injury issues early on in the year that I think really affected yeah. you down the run. I don't think the team's that, I mean, because we're just in a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, the team's still good. You I agree, personnel-wise, yeah. I like, like Dan Quinn. I think he's a motivator. It pumps me up. Bald and bearded. <laughs> Anything's but. better than Mike Smith. Anything is well, better than Mike Smith. That's how I look at it nowadays. Yeah. Isn't Ben Mack do better than Mike Smith? Anything. Literally, <laughs> if, if, if it's a breathing human being, it falls into the anything better than Mike Smith category. There's too much offense talent and the way they performed almost the whole year outside those last, what, month? Mm-hmm. Come on. Last year, you like you were saying, the same problems were occurring. You got to get new blood in there. Yeah. And Sarkeesian's a drunk. 
So that was one of the only things I did like about him. I don't know why that made me laugh. I'm he, sorry. <laughs> he brought some sauce. <laughs> brought some sauce to the team. He did. He's a beast. Yeah, but uh, need a different, yeah, different voice. Think you know, for the better. We just need someone very offensive minded that's proven that they could get shit done. And the way the the league works nowadays, you need someone who understands tendencies that work and understands game plans and understands the, things like that. Like, the only problem I see you having is getting another great offensive coordinator and him leaving in two years to get a, a head coaching job. Yeah, but yeah. that's the risk you have to take you play you play for now though yeah you gotta play for now you you know you don't hire an oc being like i want you to be my oc for the next 10 years that's not a thing yeah well not anymore now they they come and go they're all young soon enough every nsl coach is gonna have an offensive minded background that's the way this is going i'm happy with us cleaning house because i i don't think with them together it's it's gonna get back to form of what we were in in, uh, 2015 so i don't know keep doing the same thing over and over and it's not working that's the definition of insanity so it's yes it was time to do that albert snacks einstein max how we feeling about the broncos move i know you loved i so i'm very happy with the firing of vance joseph and it's a shame because i did like him when he first came in he had like a deep voice and he was like (laughs) it seemed like a motivator i was like oh this guy's gonna like fucking pump them up like i'll play for him you'd be such a sucker if you were in the gym oh yeah but he just uh he just Poor coaching decisions and, and you know game management on the oh. field. He was just he was all over the place. I think he'll do better a second, um, you know, second. Yeah, time a around. lot of those guys when, once they get their. But uh, I'm happy he's gone now. The the thing is, look, we have like five big candidates right now that we're interviewing, and I don't really like any of them. We got Chuck <laughs> that's, Pagano. That's a problem. Yeah, hell no. Mike Munchak. I saw someone tweet out like. Anytime you have the chance to interview the genius behind this play, you have to do it. And it was like the Chuck, the, it was like the the punt, that yeah. fake punt with like one fucking line. Oh yeah, that star like player Jalen Rager in motion. Right. Like, yeah. He can throw back yeah, so to Bulestein. Where's this going? First year with an Aaron. Who knows? The other way. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, you know, Flags everywhere. That solid, you know, That's the problem with everything. It's just but like. like who gets the credit where? Yeah, you know? was it really? Was it Arians? And yeah. you know what sucks that they were in such a bad spot. He was coming back from leukemia. Like you, yeah. yeah it was clear it, Arians was yeah was a stud. And then he went on to have great success with Arizona. Pagano yes. not so much with Indy. Imagine if Arians stays on with the call. It's just, there's that um unbelievable turn of events that could have happened. The other yeah. the other big name is uh, Brian Flores, the guy that you know. Pretty That's a much big name. Well, I mean, this year it is. A lot of teams are trying to interview him. I don't see it. I don't see what's been so great about. I'm not. Who big. is he? He's the uh, Patriots defensive coordinator. He's the Patriots defensive coordinator. Do you know? Do you have his? What was he prior That's to that? That's Belichick's defense. I was going to say because yeah. it was Patricia last year, and he's, he's terrible. Yeah. It says he's been in the organization for many years, serving as a scout and position coach. I think he was a linebacker coach before this. Okay, so how do you guys think these interviews go? Like uh, I've always wondered this. I've, yeah, I've I was always that wondered this, man. Like, how crazy do you think those interviews are? They say they last down. like six hours. That's yeah, what I was saying. Down, like, all right, what, about for six what the hours? fuck are you gonna do with our team? I can imagine. Yeah, yeah like lay out your plan. Some part of me is, is I'm assuming those like long interviews, like six hours, are probably maybe they have a meal. You know, they go out to like a dinner or something. They probably or, don't talk about football. Yes, exactly. It's way more of like a personal thing. So maybe they're like walking around the stadium, introducing them to people and shit like that. That's what I'm thinking. But I, I, I I'm just curious at the depth of questions that they get into entry-level jobs if you're like anyone going for an entry-level job you know you have the specific questions that they ask you that are like what are your this what are your that you i wonder know? how much x's and o's are talked right that's what i want to like, know like, like are you bringing a scheme with you like what do you you know you yeah guys you want to hire yeah you know, offensive coordinators defensive coordinators is it like is it like the water boy where where mr coach klein has the green book and you just oh, show yeah. the owner the gentleman these are all my plays what like, a book. Yeah. <laughs> What do they say? I would love to know. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. I've always thought about that. I'm like, I can't imagine what an interview is like for that. How do you even prepare? Actually, I have no idea. That's like psychological Do we know anybody that's like... I don't even know. ...inside of a football team that would have any insight on this? Because... I do not. I mean, no. Someone let me know. Someone. Yeah, in if any of you are NFL head coaches out there, just let us know how this process goes. Or if you've interviewed for a head coaching position before, yeah. write it in the comments. Please Tell let us, how us know. It goes. I don't know who's listening. And if you've interviewed for an NFL coaching head coaching job and you're listening to this podcast, there's probably a reason why you didn't get that job. So just, <laughs> Yeah, uh, tell us what went wrong. We'd still like to know. <laughs> what do you think went wrong in that interview? Yeah, for real, though, if you, uh, if you guys have been enjoying these weekly podcasts, as always, uh, hit the thumbs up button down below. That helps YouTube know that people like our shit. shit um are we all in agreement that the browns job is the most attractive bro yes uh, that team's gonna be yeah 
It team. has to be because you have a top five quarterback in the in his rookie season. Cap space, young defensive talent. They need some playmakers on the outside. I like Jarvis Landry, but I think I think yeah, that's like their more. that's really their only weak spot. That's I think, it. To be honest, with you. they got yeah. pass. They got great pass rusher. They got you know Ward to kind of hold down the outside cornerback wise and build off that. You got Peppers up in the box and that's up top. Ugh. Yeah, and then on their offense, really all they need Good is, the Browns, is some weapons dude. on the outside, but the. Freaking Browns. The Browns are about to be a force. Browns head coaching job, dude. They, I hope they don't fuck this up. I they're, hope they don't gonna, They're going to hire McCarthy. Dude, that would they be They are devastating. going to do it. I'm trying to think know, of who else. I don't know why they would. I don't know why you would move away from Greg Williams. I would look. Like, I, I can understand why. He's But look what he's done. True, You're going off but, a 10-game sample, whatever it was. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. The Browns have never been. When was the last time the Browns were this good? Now you're going to, hey, look, we're doing great. Let's let's fucking mix it up. He's that type of guy that can easily wear off on you. Yeah. Like, you listen These to small that sample size. They were just. Shit coming too. away from Hugh, who you despise more than anybody. Yeah. Of course they're going to listen to the next guy in charge, whether if it was Adolf Hitler or Greg Williams, one or the <laughs> well, other. I feel like Adolf Hitler wouldn't give you much of a choice. Mm-hmm. Greg Williams might not either. He had a how about fucking people's Hugh, heads. How about Hugh Jackson interviewing for the Bengals job? It's a, what do you think, 78% chance he gets it? If you're a Bengal fan and they hire Hugh Jackson. He don't. was their offensive coordinator, I remember, a while ago. And people loved Hugh Jackson as Love an him, offensive man. mind because mm-hmm. he, I don't know, he was really good at making that tandem of, I guess it was Gio when he first came in the league. Andy Dalton and uh, it was AJ like, Green. T- they had a good duo at running back. It was it was the, the law firm. Was it Duke Jackson? Johnson. Ben oh, Jarvis, was, um, Green Ellis, Ben oh, Jarvis, oh, ben yes. Jeremy Jarvis. Hill. He strung Jeremy together Hill like back to back years yeah, of, yeah. of of that's you know that's when you catch my attention when you could when you can put together a few years in a row mm-hmm. producing at a high level with different personnel yeah. there because then it tells you that you know you he's are the the constant can, yep. in there you know what I mean whoever he's got under there he can make work it's almost like a Belichick type thing not of course not the same thing yes. but yeah so to be honest I wouldn't hate to see him get another chance as like an OC just to contribute to a team or something OC yeah but oh he, I, he un- can't run a full team he's not a leader of men. It makes no sense. Like, why I don't the f- see why any coordinators would want to work for him. Not no. after this shit. You know who want. You know Not who after wants. After I saw on fucking. There's uh, only w- drawing a blank. Okay, well then I'll Hard finish knocks? my point. Hard knocks. He said, "I'm driving the bus. This is my uh, bus." He, he was terrible. Blah, blah, blah. He was terrible. He was, oh. he was unwatchable. There's one man. There's only one man in the world that wants to see Hugh Jackson become the Bengals head coach. And that's Marvin Lewis. Because <laughs> as soon as that happens, and as soon as they go he looks like even in further into the shooter, <laughs> he's going to look so good. God he's going to look so good. Yeah, uh, A lot of shakeups going on there. It's going to be a very who interesting you, offseason. Uh, who do you guys think is the best, the, like the best um, candidate? Todd Munkin. Who? Offensive coordinator for the Bucks. Who? He's going to go to... Did not expect that one. I didn't either. Air raid offense. He makes that offense run. Dirk Cutter, so does being down 40 points every game. Dirk Cutter sucks. It's Todd Munkin good. is it's is the guy. Todd Munkin is going to go to... I would like to see him go to the Packers. I think he's going to end up going to the Jets, uh, which is not terrible. I think the Jets are going to hire Gase. Maybe. I like Gase, too. I could see it. Denver um, guy. He was never that bad in Miami, either. No, he wasn't. And with what he had... He made the playoffs his first year. Tannehill got hurt. He won 10 Tannehill games. Tannehill played like 25 out of the 40-something games yeah. that they uh, that he And we're not there sitting for. here saying Tannehill's Tom Brady, but yeah. he was a better option than Jay Cutler. He was a better option than Brock Osweiler. Mm-hmm. And the other schnook they had in there when he got hurt the first Matt year. Matt Moore? Matt Moore. No, I, I, I um, never heard... Who, I, I could easily see. About? I know who he's talking. About. I've seen the name thrown around. Yeah, I've seen the name too. But why would he bring him up? Why would you the, bring him the, up? Because he's the best offensive the mind the on the coaching. So list. why why wouldn't he be the Bucks coach? Is he though? What about Josh McDaniels? Probably better. Did, did you not pay mind. attention to last year's off season? Yeah, he's a scumbag. But yeah, he's a cunt. So why the hell would you want him? I wouldn't want him, but someone might. I don't know. If There's I'm eight teams right now, right? Eight teams that need a coach. I would like to see Munkin go with Darnold. I want him to go with the young powerful quarterback so if he is a real deal he'll have his chance to shape the quarterback of the future for that team fair know? point fair point if i'm now if i'm a team looking for a head coach there's the first name i'm calling i don't care that he said he's not leaving oklahoma but i'm calling lincoln riley wow that man is an offensive genius he just got a raise he said he's not leaving oh my god am i wrong <laughs> no you're not and i literally so i literally start off by saying i don't care if he said he's not leaving okay so he says no now who you call okay a raise. What about what an NFL team could offer? A lot more. Yes. Plus, you're running an NFL team, a not a college team that you're never going to win a championship with. A lot more stress involved. Maybe he's not he's ready 35. for that. He's 35. Maybe he's not ready for the responsibility. Okay. What was the second name you'd call? All right, listen. Hello? Yes. Oh, you want to offer me a job? No, thank you. I just got a raise. Call me next year. Now, who do you call? Adam Gaze. 
I'm an Adam Gase fan. I think he's, was that so hard to answer? No, I'm just a little fucking annoyed at you. That's all. So yeah, I, I'm really trying not to talk to you. I mean, you kind of have to. It's the name of the game. Sorry, I haven't been paying part, attention. Part of the now, show. Now I'm no ready. good. But can you please get back into this? Because before I I, I rip, yeah. I throw this mic away and rip his head off and I, eat you like a snack. Ooh, damn. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> we have a lot of movement going on this off season. I'm excited for this off season, dude. Because between gonna, the coaches, it's gonna be lit. This is gonna be fun to watch between with running backs too. Are there any big quarterbacks on the market? Uh, those, Teddy B. Those almost yeah. never like get to the The biggest fight. is like Joe Flacco, who's like not yeah. even. Some team's going to pick him up. Yeah, I'm hoping course. it's not the Broncos. It's going to be Denver, dude. 100%. Gonna be, it might be. Yeah, 100% no. going to be Denver. All right. Fuck. So, yeah, it's going to be a really, 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 really good offseason. Before we get to that offseason, though, we have the NFL playoffs. Do, 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 the regular season is officially in the Bookers, it's officially in the novels. And we are looking at wild card weekend. First game's on Saturday, right? Two games Saturday, two games Sunday. We have the Colts at Houston in a pick'em. We have Seattle at Dallas, pretty much a pick'em as well. Both home teams have a very slight favorite in those two games. We have the Chargers plus two, two and a half at Baltimore. And we have the Eagles plus five and a half at Chicago. So we're going to keep track of our playoff record. We're going to do a little little pick them action that way we are on record you know we'll think about any bets we want to make on the way snacks i would uh probably advise you to stay away from the bets no i'm really good in the nfl i just can't pick a college game to save my life they're all winners right they're all winners but they just don't win it doesn't make any sense <laughs> i was cracking up when you put that in. that's funny shit it's funny shit all right so let's look at this colts and texans game andrew luck leading this team and creeps indianapolis into the playoffs with that win against tennessee who do you guys like here I like the Colts. I'm all over them. I think they are... I will start by saying I love Deshaun Watson, but I think the Colts are a more complete team. That offensive line is... I didn't realize how good they were until I watched that game on Sunday night. Oh, yeah. They're like, the, the full deal. game. They're unbelievable. And uh, Ryan Kelly's... Uh He's, he's going to be playing. Back. Yep. One interesting it's thing huge. I do notice right now, I'm looking at the over-unders. If you're someone who bets a lot, you notice that the over-unders this year have been like ridiculously high in all the games, right? If you're looking at any normal week slate, you're looking at games that have over-unders of 50, 53, 55, 58, and like three or four of them on each week's uh, slate. Right now, like the wild card weekend games, 41, 41 and a half, 43, 48 and a half. And you look at the best teams, the ones that aren't playing wild card weekends are the ones that have those big ass over unders, the Chiefs, the Saints, the Patriots, Rams. things like that. It's just something that I just noticed right now. Vegas kind of sees this weekend as being a defensive minded. I'm with you on the Colts though. I think they just ride this mojo straight into it. And when you have a player like like Luck, it's just um, dialed in too. It's always needed was that offensive line. Yeah. That literally it. That was it. I also just Changes don't trust everything. the Texans. I don't either. How could no. Bill, Bill O'Brien sucks? I, yeah. I don't know the, if this is a fact, but uh, it's, a, it's a fact that I think they um, played the weakest schedule, the Texans. Yeah. yeah. The, the Giants beat them. So I'm saying the Texans, I'm not impressed. No, I'm not either. Like a lot of their games that they won, they were like losing. They had to come back. It's started like they, off looking like shit, and then they go on a, you know. They play to their opponents. They play to their opponents, I feel like, a lot. It's too inconsistent to yeah. really make some noise in the playoffs. I, so I love Deshaun Watson. I do, too. Yeah, he's, he's a fun player to watch. Talent. That offensive line's putrid. That Colts defense is really good, too. Yo, Darius Leonard is legit. Yeah. Yeah. Legit. All right, so I got Colts. He's my. He'd be my defensive rookie. Are we? Are we? We're not picking against the spread. No, we're just picking, picking No, okay. just straight up pick them. Winners, winners, you know, winners, I'm winners. With you guys winners. On, on the Colts, winners. so we're all for the Colts. We're all I guess. Colts. All right, we're well, going Colts. Seattle at Dallas. Are we all gonna have the same picks? We'll see. We don't fucking know. We're rolling on to the second game. Idiot. So pick them pretty idiot. much with a slight lean towards the Dallas Cowboys over under of forty three. I am going to take the. Cowboys at home in this wow. one. Wow. I just think this this team has transformed and it's gotten better and better and better as the year has gone by. Not like I love Dak, but it's not like you don't need Dak to be anything more than an okay Dak for that offense to, to do his thing. Zeke's been a fucking monster, like 150 yards from scrimmage a game over the last month, month and a half. Seattle is... Saquon's better. The, is, I'm, there's no fight for me in that one. I for mean, some reason, I'm, I'm a believer in Dallas. I'm going to assume that he's with me and I'm picking Seattle. Hey Amen. Never picked Dallas. Well, they yeah, suck. Exactly, Absolutely why. not. Would so, never. Ever. I mean... Couldn't I, pay me. I just like... like you were, you were, We were talking earlier and like what you said about whoever has the best run game. Now I know that Seattle has probably they have a, the they have a probably real the, run game. the best run game. I know like the Cowboys are legit with Zeke, but Seattle's they got three running backs they can run it with. Russell Wilson just does it all. I I, I can't bet against them in the, no, in the playoffs, it, to, to especially me, with the Cowboys history in the playoffs. I understand Nick's point because their defense flies around the field. That run game's incredible. Mm-hmm. So when I look at it, I think they're both pretty evenly matched. 
when I look at two evenly matched teams, the first thing I go to is the quarterback, and I clearly give that to Seattle. Yeah. And the next thing I go to is the coach. I don't think that's a question either. So I am on the Seahawks. I hate the Cowboys. Love the analysis. Yeah, that wasn't bad, right? (laughs) Right? That was good. That wasn't bad. It's good. Analysis all around. It, uh, that was fine analysis until you're wrong. And then I we, mean, very well could be. It's not process over results because results are right 100% of the time. All right, so Seahawks, Seahawks, Cowboys. Cowboys. Just, I just, for the Cowboy fans out there, just since since uh, about 1995, I think it is, they've won two playoff games and the Giants have won two Super Bowls. No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I have no idea. No. This is the only one I've had. Oh, really? I want to try creme brulee. I've never taken a hit of one of those things. Dude, be careful. Yeah? It fucking hits hard. Like, There's not the, weed in this, right? No. no. no weed at all. Rip the piss out of it. You it's like, like you would well, smoke what, a what blunt. What were you saying? You smoke a blunt? Yeah, like hit it, inhale it. It's like thick. You know what I mean? Like get, That tastes good as fuck. Yeah, get good. this thing away from me. <laughs> get this thing away from me. Julian it up. Yeah, dude, my, my cousin, I was, I was telling you guys before this, my cousin at, I think it was Thanksgiving. He's a senior in high school, right? And that's like the fucking good kid. If you're a this, marketer, this that's like yeah, who you market that's why to. That's are getting rid of the mango and all the flavors. Apparently. But he was telling me, and I'm like, at the wrong time. it made me a little jealous because he was like, yeah, me and my friends will be in like second period or whatever, and we'll all like text each other, like, yeah, let's go, uh, let's go take a, <laughs> let's go take a jewel break in the bathroom or something. Oh my god! And I'm like, dude, we would have slaughtered that in high school. Oh, dude, you, I did. did we we though. used to we used to do, we used to go to. to to pack lips in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah but it'd who's be, got a can? It'd be mm-hmm. so easy to do that. Jewel is so much more efficient because you can go in there for two minutes and come out fine. Yeah, you'd have to sit there packing a packing a heater for twenty minutes to yeah. get yeah. its worth. You leave no fucking it, like, evidence behind. None. No evidence. Damn. Fucked up part about it is though, like my cousin would never be smoking like cigarettes if cigarettes if like jewels didn't exist. You know what I mean? Yeah. I feel like 90% of the kids who smoke those probably wouldn't be smoking cigarettes either. No. And now it's going to fuck them yeah, up. Yeah, well, my in like dad's trying years. to quit smoking. He just got one. And like now, like my whole family does it. So like I felt left out. So I got one. And then like <laughs> the me hands all I was your family. Ne- the, the next family picture. <laughs> all yeah. jeweled up. Yeah, so like left out. And I didn't want to just start jeweling for no reason because, you know, that makes no sense. So on New Year's, I bought this. I bought a pack of cigarettes. And I smoked these. I was like, okay, now. You kept, you I kept can't keep smoking cigarettes. This is gross. I should start jeweling. So now I got my jewel. I'm ready to go. You kept the cigarette box. Well, wow, for those for the viewers. All right. So how Smart long play. does that? How long does that last for? Give me the, the logistics. Behind I the, know nothing about this jewel. thing. My I just brother, know that mango my brother is good. would say, Max, you how do you spell jewel? You, J- you U- personally, J E W L. J E W L. Yes, <laughs> jewel. <laughs> okay. Apparently, they last a little while. I don't, I don't. Do you, is it, are these the things you charge? You charge them, yeah. yeah you know, I, I never, I never really understood them because Apparently, Brandon has so like something cigarettes. that looks like that, but every time he hits it, he gets high. And I'm like, Brandon, whatever you're smoking, well, that's not what I'm Brandon, thinking about. Man. That's different. Yeah, I know. Love the kid. Sorry, Uncle Brandy. Brando. Love you. Feel better. He's got a bad fever. Yeah, He's had I know. a bad fever like, for a week straight. That really, that's tough. Yeah. When he gets sick, he gets sick. He really does. It's unbelievable. And he right. just keeps sending like me Snapchats a... of him just taking shits. I'm nah, like, wow. Well, I didn't hear that kid fart for 20 years. <laughs> I've been his friend for my whole life. 25 years. I didn't. I heard his first fart when we were about 20. My favorite thing in the world is that he just like he just developed like a sweet tooth this year for the first time. <laughs> so he goes to Glaze Donuts two or three times a month now Ooh. with his girlfriend. And I'm I'm a huge donut advocate. So this is Damn big it. for me. This is a big like lifestyle switch. I love now. donuts and iced coffee. Yes, it's that's a killer time. killer combo. Do you fuck, dunk them? Fuck the coffee. Do you dunk them? No, em? I, I like to take a bite and then take a drink. Get Damn. you know weird. It's weird. I don't think it's that weird. It's weird. No. It's Whatever. A good, it's a good combo because the, the iced coffee's sweet. If you got a yeah, little yeah, yeah. little sugar, a little I do, sugar I do daddy. Cream. And you make fun of me for re- you make fun yeah, of me for reading blend. the newspaper, but you do that. Yes. Okay. I used to read the newspaper, and then I discovered the internet. <laughs> So that was really that. Like right now, I can just easily look. All right, who's the next game? I'm Chargers sm- Ravens. I'm smarter than you. Okay, who do you pick? Uh, and and this pains me to do it because of my allegiance to the Broncos, but I'm gonna go with the Chargers. Over under 41 and a half for this one. So a low scoring affair in Baltimore. Oh, for sure. The fucked up part about it is L.A. Oh, they, they're so screwed. So L.A. is traveling, right? They got to travel from L.A. to Baltimore. It's a 1 p.m. Eastern time kickoff, which means it's 10 a.m. their time. It's not a good traveling situation for them. They got they got fucked. They, they got, got shafted. What are they, 12 and 4? They finished 12 and 4? 12 and 4. That's unbelievable. 12 and 4 and they get disrespected by the league do they come out a little bit more motivated i, I would think so right i could see it i mean philip rivers probably goes to bed at like 8 8, 8 p.m yeah he, he's yeah. the least of the problems well playoff phil i don't know nick who you take you took baltimore uh la you said max yeah i'm taking la i think that last game was it wasn't fluky but 
I think this is the playoffs, and Phil's going to be a different quarterback. He's Based gonna be, on what? Okay. Based um, on his <laughs> his veteran status. But you yeah. could have said that any year prior to this as well. Yeah, and it's never happened. Well, they haven't really been in the playoffs in a while since the, you know, the LT this years. Is, this is the game I am by far the most conflicted on. Again, I think it's one of those evenly matched up things, but they're, they're two different teams. Mm-hmm. If the Chargers go up by two scores, there's zero chance the Ravens are coming back to win that game. They just can't throw like that. That's not how they're built. Yeah. But they're, luckily their defense is built to not let them get down by 14 points. And that's exactly what I was going to say. With that being said, that defense is playing lights out. They control the ball on offense. That defense does not let people score. And they, they went to L.A. and beat the shit out of them. They didn't beat them. They beat the piss out of the Chargers. With that said, I am not a Lamar Jackson fan at all. I don't think this will ever last. But I think it lasts one more week, and I will take the Ravens. I'm with you on Baltimore. I think I don't think enough can be said about how much that Ravens offense and that staff has bought into Lamar Jackson playing his style, They're right? All in. Because yep. they could have fucked him up bad and been yeah, like, oh, you're just not a good quarterback because we're going to try to fit you into our NFL-style mm-hmm. quarterback. Yeah, but they're dropping leg- back and throwing it. Even though you know what I mean? Like, they're legit. It. He's averaging, I think, I, I I did the numbers. When we get into the big facts later, I'll talk about Lamar a little bit. But he's averaging legit, like, 18 rushes a game. Yeah. And listen— if that's the most effective way for your offense to run, let him do that, you know? And they've done a great job of letting him do that and not being like, oh, we only want you to run five times a game because their offense would be fucking miserable if they bad, wanted yeah. him to pass it. He hasn't thrown more than 25 passes in a game yet. Yeah, he's basically a running back who takes the snaps. Exactly. And Man, then, if that's what's going to work. Throws it every once in a while. Yeah, so I'm with you in that it's really, really tight and it's tough to pick, but I, in most cases, scenarios like that, I will take the home team, the team that I think is rolling. Like, Dude, he's 6-1 and one. Yeah. as quarterback. The only game he lost the was Chiefs. in Arrowhead overtime. And they should have probably won that yeah, Shout that out the fucking too. over-under. I hit that. Baby, that felt good. I was hammered, I remember, when that was going on and I was going nuts. But yeah, I I, I like Baltimore there, so chalk me down for yep. for Experience little Raven head action. Coach in the playoffs, I, I love that. And last of the four games, the Sunday afternoon, we got Philly traveling to Shy Town. Five and a half point favorites. The Bears are over under a forty one. Oh man, yeah. I don't even want to watch this game, but yeah, it's gonna be an ugly one. I'm gonna roll with Chicago here. Yeah, no reason not to. It's not like Philly's been so hot that you're like, you know what? They might really pull out a crazy one here. I'm just I, I, nothing about that offense is inspiring, and the only thing they're working with literally is Big Dick Nick Foles magic. That's it. Mm-hmm. I, what else do they have? He's banged up. He got that little rib injury the last game. Hey, how long, how long does the Viagra last, bro? That's how long. Ooh, I think it finally four ends. hours is supposed to be in there. We four games, four hours. How many games been, has he played thus far? Is it time to call I think the doctor? It's been four games. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nick Foles' magic is going to run out. We've been hammering home the point where maybe we haven't. I don't know. It's been in my head though. That defense and the running game is a playoff. That's the, that's the playoff, that's the playoff formula. That's, that's the playoff it. formula. And there's no defense in the NFL better than Chicago. I would never pick Philly, scum of the earth, worst city in the world. So Love that. I will take Chicago as well. Cheesesteaks are overrated in Philly too. There's literally nothing good about Philly. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. You're absurd. Chicago riding a, uh, a four-game win streak into the playoffs right now. And I love what they did. They played the whole game against Minnesota. Yeah. I love that. Me too. Yeah, I hate when they start sitting people. I feel like that usually ends up working out worse. It never works. The Giants win. I'm sorry to bring it up, but when they beat the Patriots the first time, they played them in the regular season. Playoffs locked up. A momentum killer. They went and they played the whole game. Put out the recipe how to beat them. As long as no one gets hurt, it it works out. I think the only reason you should just rest somebody for no reason or for a reason, the only reason should be is if like they're you know if they've been dealing with like if Melvin Gordon they didn't need him week seventeen. There's no reason to play exactly. exactly. Like that's that's the only reason you don't just rest healthy players for the sake of resting them. Yeah, that's it. So Max, you go. I um, I'm taking Chicago. I like the Bears. I can't buy into the Eagles again. No, I don't think they have you know enough to do it two years in a row. It's so hard to go back to back. It is. And I they mean, really should not be in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. They're riding this this energy right now from Big Dick Nick, and I don't think it's going to last. I think the defense of the Bears is too good. And like we said before, that formula, the playoff. That's it. Good defense and a run game. They got two backs that are. Very, I am very a little good. nervous about the Bears. Their wide receivers are all pretty banged up. Yeah, I think Miller got hurt. Miller got yeah. hurt. Robinson's been banged up. Trey Burton's not really been. Yeah, the thing is that they've been getting it done like without those guys being What's any, their defense? anything close to the reason you know? of that of that being. Jordan Howard is starting to turn Jordan it on. Jordan Howard's turning it back on. Tariq Cohen's a weapon. Tariq Cohen's a beast, bro. He really yeah. is. They don't really need to ask Trubisky to do too much. Let those two running backs do a lot of the work. Let him sure. fucking act as a third running back. Give him double digit. 
Uh, and we're, and we're, we're in Chicago, so let's see what the, the weather's going to be like. That exactly. Could it's probably going to be like 13 some fucking good football degrees. weather, yeah. If Mike Dick is in the house, it's, it's not even. Game over. It's game over. I, I, game over. We all agree on the Bears yeah. and Colts, and then the other two, we uh, have a little mix and matching going on. So. Okay. So should it should be an interesting great. one. Wild card weekend's great. Divisional round's better, but this is a good start, so. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going to move into a section known as Big Facts Only, where your man's hits you with some, oh, you got the apparel on today, the merch. Make sure you check out on the website, bigdogfantasy.com. Go grab some merch. We got some new t-shirt designs up on the website, too. They're looking pretty, pretty frosh. I'm going to run you through some statistics, some, some wild facts that I found. If you're ever following me on Twitter and I just start spewing out like random statistics like this, it's because I'm in the middle of like an article or something. And while I'm doing that, I just tweet out all the best things I found. So we're gonna run through like three or four of them. We're talking about Lamar Jackson before, and obviously the rushing numbers have been crazy since he's taken over as a starter. He took over as a starter in week 11, I think it was. Been the starter for seven games, six and one in that time. Looking at the rushing numbers from just those seven games as the starter. And if you pace them out to a 16 game season, Lamar Jackson finishes a season with 272 carries, 1,070 rushing yards, nine rushing touchdowns which is the equivalent to 161 fantasy points, which would actually make him the RB21 in standard or the RB22 in half PPR. That is with zero passing statistics. That is with zero receiving statistics, while those other running backs in the rankings do have receiving statistics, obviously, to work with. So Lamar Jackson's rushing numbers are just fucking out of control. The ceiling, the floor, it's all there. But again, yo, shout out to the coaching staff for letting him yep. run the offense that way. They let the birdie fly. Yes, sir. That's what you got to do if you're going to draft him knowing that, you know? Like a lot of teams don't, all they can do is, is go on a guy's raw talent. But it's like you got to make the, the system work for that player. Speaking of another rookie quarterback that uses his legs quite often. It's not Kyle Oletta. Joshua Allen. Mm. Joshua mm. Allen, I went back to his college numbers. He did not have a single game the 75 rushing yards in college. Not at one game where he had 75. He has gone for 95 yards or more on the ground in four of the last six games that the Bills have played. Beast. So never 75 in college, but over 95 in four of the last six games. So he turned into a hashtag freak athlete. Yeah. I think it's just because he can't throw the ball that well yet. So yeah, I was going to say. He's got to run around. Can't. Yeah. like he's. He also has no weapons to None. work with. Yeah. I don't even know one of his wide receivers. I know Zay Jones. Robert Foster, started. Zay Jones. Yeah, like yeah. they're really, they're really hurting with weapons over there. I feel like we're not really going to know anything about him still until the end of next year, something well, like but that. But they always said, and it, it's very I difficult. I mean, from what I know as an expert football scout, it's pretty difficult to fix accuracy. Correct. Like yeah, he never went and, over like 55% in college. That's his problem. I don't think they were really expecting that either, though. Exactly. But Bills were not atrocious with him playing. No. Like they were in no, games. No, it worked. Fan okay, fantasy wise. L. Jacks, Josh Allen opened the year as the respective starters for their teams. Who do you like more? Josh Who's Allen. Higher? I like Josh Allen. I just think he's bigger and more durable. I do too. I worry about Lamar Jackson. And I think I think the on talent pace. is definitely there, which could lead to a Interesting few. you say, though, that because Allen already missed time with injuries. Yeah, year. I know. I'm aware. He had like a wrist thingy. Mm -hmm. But he a bitch. He could be. But he's a big boy. Lamar yeah. Jackson's a skinny little bitch like me. Yeah. So... We'll see. Um, I mean, who knows? He could be hitting the weights real hard this summer. Lamar yeah, Jackson no. I mean, in. for all intents and purposes, I hope so. No, actually, I don't hope so. I root for Lamar Jackson. Jackson's failure. That's going to be a close one. I think that's probably going to be a very hot debate this summer, uh, fantasy-wise. I have one more big fact, I think. Let's so, hear it. Calvin Ridley. The big fact. My mans. Overrated. Is the fourth wide receiver since the year 2000 to catch double-digit touchdowns during his rookie season. I can name one of them. Fourth wide receiver in the last 20 years. Yep. Oh. Let's see if you guys can guess the other three. Okay. Odell. Odell. Um, they're all re they're they're all 2010 or or, or didn't Evans earlier. Do it? Calvin Johnson. Didn't Evans have him on? No. Day? Yes. Yes. Evans have. Yeah. It was Odell. Odell and Mike Evans both caught 12 touchdowns in 2014. There was one other guy back in 2010. 2010. He kind of just fell off the face of the earth after this too. Fell off the face. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Mike Williams. Yes. No shit, really? Yeah. Did you see wow. my tweet today? No, I didn't. No. I've yeah. never been on Twitter. It was Mike Williams. <laughs> oh, yeah. When you said fell off the face of the earth, That's, that makes yeah. a lot of sense now. And then mm -hmm. when you said Buccaneers, it was... Damn. Um, I actually have... That's remarkable. Holy shit. I have a few other big There's facts. a lot of those guys that like came in and like, were good and then just died. Yeah. I feel. I also feel like there's been about 50 Mike Williams wide receivers. That's like the, that's a, that's in, in that tweet. Name. I like went in the parentheses and I was like Tampa Bay because yeah, yeah, I was to. like I wouldn't even know who that was if someone tweeted that out. So another big fact we got for you: since the year 2000, there have been 159 instances of a player catching 
10 or more receiving touchdowns in a year. So since 2000, you know, running backs, tight ends, wide receivers, double digit touchdowns, receiving touchdowns, 159 different instances. Mike Williams this year, Chargers, Mike Williams caught 43 passes and had double digit touchdowns. That is the fourth lowest number of passes to have double digit touchdowns of those 159 instances. He only caught 43 passes. That's an is Tyler Lockett on that list for this Tyler year? Tyler Lockett was on this list. Uh, I actually have Williams, Tyler Lockett, Calvin Ridley, Eric Ebron are all pretty low ranked in that. Yeah. But Mike Williams had 43 catches. 43 and 10. Tyler Lockett had 57, so he had 14 more. Calvin Ridley had 64. Eric Ebron had 66. There was like a couple of games where like Mike Williams had, I think he had two games where he scored three touchdowns each. Yeah. Well, those are only receiving because he had like a rushing touchdown that yeah. one game, too. So there's he a actually... lot of there was a lot of those. Like Calvin Ridley had a game where he scored three touchdowns mm-hmm. and like Julio scored none. There was those games where guys like went off and like Ebron had the game where he had three touchdowns. Yeah, there's a lot of three touchdown games. Yeah, this year. it's like, I mean, I don't know if that's as common. It's like I was playing against them. You know, the player prop on that is fantasy fucking too. gold. It's like plus 5,000. That's an unbelievable stat, though. Actually, right. I have like three more I can keep rattling. Let's go. Let's rattle more, All right, baby. Fuck it, let's go. Big I thought facts. you guys were going to get sick of this shit. Let's no. go. So, rushing attempts of 40 plus yards this year Saquon. Saquon, number one. Nick Chubb, number two. Philip Lindsay, number three. Rookie running backs grace the top three. C Mac, Mixon, Crowell, and AP are also tied with Philip Lindsay in third. <laughs> but yeah, Baquan, Chubby, and Philip Lindsay, man, they grace the top of those, those big plays, big runs. Mm-hmm. We talk about. Sense. Now, you know, looking back on last year, actually last year's running back class was a stupid all, all time, yeah. I was going to say like it is the top is the top of this list comparable to that one? Probably but, not. No, they're not going to be because last year's was just fucking out of control. And but, one of and one of them's out of the league due to beating women, so it's You don't even miss a beat if he's out of that list, to be honest with you too. So Yeah, that list is strong. So, That's the one that you tweeted, right? Yeah. You yeah. saw that like Dude, it's, it's crazy. from top to bottom. It's like Chris Carson, seventh, seventh round, round, Aaron Jones, fifth round. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, it's, and there's like 10 good guys ahead of them. One last tweet I got for you. So Chris Herndon, Chris Herndon this year, the Jets tight end. Yeah, for the Jets. 502 receiving yards. Tight ends that are rookies rarely ever do anything production-wise. Those 502 receiving yards were the 12th highest total for a rookie tight end over the last 20 years. 12th highest wow. over the last He did not years. start all season, right? He was not. No, he was splitting time. With, like, they had a bunch of guys that they were kind of siphoning yeah, in and, and out. Evan Tomlinson, I think, and someone else. Do you have how many games he played? Because there was a couple of times where, like, after he had, like, a nice week, I thought about picking him up, but. He got consistent kind of down the stretch, second half of the year. Uh, 14, 14 games. 14. I don't think he really played, played 14, though. He appeared, well, weeks two through four. Two targets. Yeah, four, two, one. But he wasn't really that consistent with volume for most of the year. So he, he started becoming somewhat of a fantasy factor down the stretch. But I would love to see Darnold another year of progression. Herndon. Herndon came out of Miami, so no one really knew who he was because Njoku was the guy that you know was taking yeah. a year prior to him. It was a fourth round pick. Um he's someone definitely to keep an eye on. There was another rookie tight end. <clears throat> so Herndon was twelfth of the last twenty years. Mark Andrews of the Ravens had five hundred and fifty two, yeah. which was the seventh highest. Damn. Over the last, and he's not years. the rookie tight end that from everybody was talking about. Yeah, you Hurst was Hayden the Hurst earlier was one. Be the guy. I picked both of the tight ends they picked were were good, were plus mm-hmm. um, receiving tight ends. I don't think I've ever seen a team draft two tight ends. That was absurd, round. actually. Now <laughs> that I think about me? it, the, the that tight end sandwich with Lamar Jackson in the middle of it was like some of the most absurd fucking draft I, picking I've ever seen. Listen, just a little. It's not off topic. You were saying rookie tight ends. Brings me back to my glory days in 2002 with Jeremy Shockey. 75 catches, 900 yards. That's pretty. I love Jeremy Shockey. He was a beast. One of my all-time favorite tight ends. Yeah. We won without him, though. We didn't Might be him. my favorite. We didn't need him. No. He was a cancer to Eli. Got rid of him. Once you identify a cancer, you remove it. That's what we did with Jeremy Shockey, and that's what we should do with Odell Beckham Jr. Get rid of him. We got a motherfucking man duel. Man duel. Man duel. Man duel. There's some tension in Pittsburgh. We got... Antonio Brown reportedly throwing a football at Big Ben at the end of practice. Then he skips practice. Then he does not allowed to fucking play for the team. And we don't was, know what occurred here, do we? We just know that there was a, a scuffle. That's more of a big thought than a big fact. Apparently, I don't know what actually happened, but the only reports I saw were that Antonio Brown got in a fight with someone at practice. Not, I don't think it was a physical altercation. I think he got pissed and then actually threw a football at Big Ben. <laughs> Big Ben's way too agile. There's no way that football hit him. You've, no, seen, no you've seen the video of him getting rid of the Oh, pants. I love that fucking video so much. <laughs> That's going to be the up. sole factor in me who up. I choose for man. 100%. So we're actually going fucking tag team. It's not yeah. just Ben versus Antonio Brown because Ben would destroy Brown. 
We're going to throw Lev Bell on Antonio Brown's side. And we're going to throw Mike Tomlin on Big Ben's side. Because clearly there's there's some disconnect between all four of these And guys. Brown said, you know, reportedly that the coach Tomlin is too aligned with the quarterback. Which, I mean, I don't know. It's the most sounds important like a, position Sounds like a good strategy. Sounds like a normal thing. Yeah. yeah. So we got, some, we got some tension brewing in that Steelers locker room. We're going to throw these guys in the ring. Are we going to do like a two-on-two at once? Or do they have to do like an actual tag team to get out? Like how's this going to work? I mean, when I, when I was first thinking about it I, I was gonna say because what i'm thinking of right now is bell and brown are the apa farouk and bradshaw and or maybe the league of domination with mark henry and d brown and <laughs> tomlin and big ben are the dudley boys bubba ray and devon i would go one in at a time one at a time yeah a steel cage match this is it's gonna get too clustered with everybody in wrestling ring with ropes it's not a royal straight Rumble. up it's not a, yeah Dead, no, dead. no. Okay. We're, we're gonna have we're gonna right. we're gonna have laws and and ground rules here. This is gonna be civilized. Is there a guest referee? Martavis Bryant. James Harrison. Oh yeah. Hmm. James Harrison. James Harrison is a fair, unbiased fucking beast. James motherfucking Harrison. James Harrison, special guest referee. Odds are set at. Let's hear. Minus two ten. Ben and Tomlin. Wow. Why is the wow so, reaction? Because. I'm laying the juice, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, I would yeah. lay him at 520. That's easy money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big Ben, show the video. Show the video of Big Ben dodging all the guys. You you got it. Do you need they, to see more than that? No. You don't. You, you, you don't. But you have Tomlin, who's a psycho. He wears this big-ass chain over his shirt. Like, I mean, I wear a chain. I never take it out. He wears this big thing. No mm-hmm. shame. When he screams, veins out the neck. So you have eyes out, like, out here. I ain't fucking with that. Bell's, Bell's he's, rusty. He's rusty. Brown kind of makes me nervous in the fact that I feel like if you put him in an octagon, I feel like he would be able to do a, th- a fucking 360 around the ring without touching the floor. He would be able Fair. to. He would yes. be able to climb around the fence, you know, without ever making yeah. contact with the ground. I just don't see him. Yeah. I don't know what that would do for him. Now, no. Does it worry you at all when Tomlin's in the ring? Maybe up against no. a Bell or a Brown? Because no. I'm putting this all Do you remember when, on Ben, where my money's going on Ben. Tomlin could get fucking is cracked it like, by Is it just AB. like till death? Like both of y'all guys are dying? It's till death. It's man okay. So if Tomlin dies yeah. and Big Ben is in by himself? Yeah. Okay. I still, I, Big Ben. Oh, okay. But do you guys remember well, Brown? What would be the adjusted odds? Kicking that punter on the return? Yeah, I remember that. I think that needs to be factored in. That guy was a punter. This is Big Ben Roth. Yeah. Yeah, but this is Mike Tom. I'm talking about Tomlin. Okay, so Tom... If Tomlin's out, the odds go from 210 to what? About plus some money in a handicap match between Bell and Brown and Big I don't even ben. know if it'd be plus. I think it'd be a pick maybe. It would probably be a pick <laughs> And okay. I'm still taking Ben. I'm still taking Ben, too. Yeah. And if he's wearing the walking boot, there's and, no shot. Any James Harrison factor in here? Does he have beef with Tomlin? He, he might, was, he he was with AB today. I saw they, they did an Instagram video today. Yeah. Chair to Tomlin's head, maybe? That's, I, I, that's huge. That's I, huge. Who knows? You can factor that in, but... In 1996, everybody thought Mike Tyson was with Shawn Michaels, and he turned on him and Stone Cold Steve <laughs> Austin won the belt. So You're right. So this could actually be big good facts. for Big Ben. You don't know. Exactly. Ooh, big Ben a- won James Harrison's Super Bowl. So I'm <laughs> taking Ben and Tomlin, and I'm not even thinking twice about it. Bell is rusty. Brown's, I'm sorry. Brown's a little, he's a little bitch. He can run. He can move. He's agile. Not my cup of tea. Off topic, but if Antonio Brown gave you three free punches, do you think you could beat him in a fight? If he gave me three punches, three, three in a fight, three, I'd beat him. Yeah, hundred percent. Your would, punches would not affect. Would you go with? You would break your wrist. No, on a punch. Would you take 100%. your time? Would you like get one, like three wind up punches, or like you throw in a combo? Everything I have done in my life has been methodical. Okay, I don't act on impulse. You're not gonna throw three haymakers then? No, I would. You don't act on impulse. Attack. No. I disagree. I'm literally the opposite of you. That's interesting that you say that. I like to that. think it out, too. I like to think like, it out. I just don't do it that Sometimes right things here, come out of my mouth in impulse, but, you know, action-wise, nothing I do is without methodical, strategic thinking. Okay, so you're methodical, Nicholas. Tell us the method to your madness. How, how does how does this match end? Um, I think I think Tomlin starts off the match against Bell. I think it's a it's a colossal fight. I think they both go at each other hard, and I think Bell actually takes him out first. So Tomlin's gone, but Bell is Bell shattered, like he's hurt. Yes. Big Ben comes right in, and he takes him out right away. Like literally, like big boot with the walking boot to the skull. Oh no, clothesline. No, he takes him out with the big boot big old, right to the right. skull. I like it. And then it's Brown and a B. Uh, Big Ben and a B. And from there. I just, I, I don't see AB and Roethlisberger going longer than 25 seconds. I think Ben takes him out real quick, and it's game over. TKO, 
Ben Tomlin for the win. I'm with you. I think Brown starts the match up with Tomlin. I think Brown. I think he does does his little Spider Man thing. I think he runs around the fucking ring. I think he. I think he delivers a, a kick to Tomlin's face hole. First. His head spins off to Big Ben, catches it, <laughs> whips it. At you want Bell. the ball this now, is, bitch? This is turning yeah. into celebrity death match. He, he whips it at Brown. Okay. I like this. And he's like, Brown, you sucked as a wide receiver, anyways. Brown misses it because he does suck as a wide receiver. Debatable. Yeah. Well, <laughs> this is fighting, not okay. NFL. Misses it, hits him in the head, mm -hmm. kills him. It's Bell versus Ben. Do I need to explain anything further? No, it's over. I think yeah. that's it. I think he picks him up. It's literally. I think over. he takes a bite out of Bell first. Body slams him down to the ground, and the rest is history. Ben walks out of there victorious as the champ. See, I see it going a little differently. Same result, but Tomlin gets in right away. Obviously knocked out because we have no faith in him fighting, apparently. None. Right? He, yeah, just, he was a total no non-factor into this. So he basically gets knocked out. We'll go by Le'Veon Bell, who tags in AB, but Antonio Brown starts celebrating. He starts dancing. Mm. He is He's a looking at the crowd. James Harrison out of nowhere with a chair. Steel chair! Boom! Oh. Out of nowhere. What? Hits this AB. is no DQ match, I assume. He's yeah, the ref. He can do whatever he wants. He can do whatever he wants. James Harrison. So he knocks out AB. Ben covers it. Over. Wow. That's a twist, and I tell right? you, I could wow. see it happening. I don't know if I see James Harrison doing that to his yeah. fucking boy. Except maybe it's not a steel chair. Maybe it's like a dumbbell. Mm, Ooh, that would that would be more likely. Like boom! Hammer. And kills right? him. Just puts it back in his pocket. No one sees it. He probably gets mad at AB because AB is like tweeting or some shit during the match. Mm -hmm. He's not dancing. He's taking yeah, selfies. He pulls out like ring. Instagram Live. He's yeah. He probably starts James off Harrison the match. Like, what is that? Probably yeah. starts off the match thinking he's going to wind up helping AB and Bell. And then he sees Brown's antics and he's like, that ain't my shit. Tom's already down. Fuck it. Well, I'm all in agreement on something. I think that's the first ever on Mandel, right? This is fucked up, yeah. Because you, I mean, you guys picked Witten over Booger, idiots. No, I picked Booger. Did you? No, you picked Witten. You did picked pick Witten? Witten? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did. Heavily went Witten. He had, he had the reach. Had the reach. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. He had the it was reach. reach. Yeah, he had the reach. All right, so that's going to wrap up. Is a man duel? That's gonna wrap up the episode. Uh, and again, I'm sorry that we were late on this one. But listen, fuck I'm it. really not sorry. Life I, I fucking was shitting, happened. I was shitting blood. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I was I was ready to go. Just want to put that out there. Oh, everybody, look! It's a hero. I was available. Big facts. Your best ability is your, your availability. availability. That's right. That's Love why that. Eli Manning's so, the greatest quarterback of all time. Be better. Be better. Be better, Nick. Snacks. Be, be better. Be better, bro. I just tweeted out to Adam Thielen. Be I want to suck his yeah, cock. exactly. <laughs> That's because you need to be better. If you were better, you wouldn't have had done that. You realize, like, I was sitting there. I'm like, the Giants lose this game. They're going to have, like, the fifth or sixth pick. And if they win, they're going to have, like, the 12th. But I'll get my jersey, and that's all I want. Honestly, I don't want to talk about, like, closing the fucking season wins. <laughs> all the foul we could have, like, a top five pick right now. Yeah. And we're going to miss out on fucking Ed Oliver. We're going to miss out on the fat Alabama defensive lineman who's a fucking stud. And we're going to end up taking the Gucci Mane thinks that we should trade up for, for the number one overall pick and, and take Dwayne Haskins. Gucci man. Gucci man. I would let him run our team. What? We need some kind of fucking help. <laughs> Gucci fucking man. That's a rapper, right? You yes. know who Gucci man is. Yeah. Stop that. I know who he is. I've heard of him. I'm a Gucci man. I'm with y'all. I'm a man of the people. If y'all are some mans of us, if you fucks with our weekly those, recaps those thumbs up yeah make Some sure likes. you hit the thumbs up make sure you subscribe make sure you share comments sure. talk shit kind of please do whatever. Do, whatever. do whatever i think yeah, next week that you said that you said bullying next week i want to talk about bullying i don't bullying yeah bullying oh we, we should have told them in the beginning of the episode we're gonna do a mock draft next week to get them we, fucking pumped up well, well we can tell them now well guess tell what now. get pumped up first round 2019 fantasy football mock draft we're all gonna take uh four teams and pick through the entire first round yeah i'm 12, 12 team 12 team, 12 team. Three four picks each. Three, three picks half each. point PPR. Four picks each. God, we sound so stupid three right picks. now. Three picks each. We're just like yelling random no, numbers at each other. It's four picks each. I think so. Yeah, I, I can't even do it. There's three of us. Three, four. Four picks each. Twelve. Times three. Four picks each. Is 12. Yes. Are you sure? Well, three times four <laughs> is 12. Yes. Yeah, but it's different when you do it the other way. Hey, peace. Peace. <laughs>